In today's video, I will be showing you guys my top 50 rarest and most expensive Yu-Gi-Oh cards. What's up guys, today you're gonna see my top 50 rarest and most expensive Yu-Gi-Oh cards. A thing to keep in mind when talking about most expensive cards or collectibles is you kind of have to go off sales data and sometimes there's not sales data. So I had a price from the previous top 25 or top 10 or another time when I looked up a price in Excel sheet and it may or may not have been a sale and estimate based on available or whatever. And some of it didn't change from the last one and some did. So keep in mind that some will be based on recent sales data, some's on older sales data, and I haven't heard of any updates since. Prices are not definite, they're often changing. So for some of these cards, they will have gone down from the last video, some will have gone up. Some weren't even in the last video because it was only a top 25 or I acquired new cards, etc. So things will have changed. But before we get into it, we do have a quick giveaway. I'll be giving away these three cards. All you have to do, like this video, be subscribed. Let me know your most expensive Yu-Gi-Oh card, card collectible, something like that. Let's get into the top 50. So first off, at number 50, I had a ton of cards that I valued around $500. By the way, this is going to be mostly graded cards. I do have a few cards from like my GOAT deck that could have made it into the top 50 being over $500. But I wanted to do just mostly graded just to keep it like consistent because if I have some raw cards in there, it's going to get a little crazy. Let's start off with the first one. As I said, I had a tie for a lot of $500 cards. So I went with my favorite card, which is Millennium Shield. It's one of my favorite cards in general. If you ever went to McDonald's as a kid, this was the ultra rare as well as Cosmo Queen that you could pull. So this is a really cool one, iconic to me. It still holds a decent value for how old it is. However, there were so many available that it's not too expensive. Next up, we have a first edition Injection Fairy Lily PSA 9. So this is the secret rare that we pulled with Leonhardt in that awesome video. Ended up getting a nine. That's pretty good centering for an Injection Fairy Lily. When these are PSA 10, they are much more expensive. The nines are a lot more plentiful, so they're a little bit lower value. Also, LOD is not the most expensive set compared to some of the older ones, but it's still a pretty good one. So a pretty nice card at number 49. Here we have a OG Unlimited Blue Eyes White Dragon. This is a mint nine. It's not a 10 or else it'd be worth a lot more, but it does have a foil shift on it. You guys can see the top where the foil line is there. It's because it's pushed down and all the card sort of has like a, a shadow almost. That's because the foil is shifted down. I had this maybe around like $600. I'm not really sure what this should go for. Maybe a little bit more than that because of the foil shift, but it's a really cool card and I figure it's always nice to have the Blue Eyes White Dragon in the top 50. Then we have an End of Anubis. This is the Secret Rare First Edition from Ancient Sanctuary. There are two in the set. There's also the Mazera Deville. So this is probably the lesser valued one. They're both not too popular, but it's still pretty cool. It's not really one to write home about, but it's still really cool to have a first edition secret rare i did pull this myself in a video next up we have luminous soldier this is from tournament pack five it's the ultra rare one in 108 you guys have heard that a lot of times to actually pull this guy so 20 packs per box you have to open up five six boxes something like that to get the ratio and actually pull it then the gym mint 10 so that makes it pretty rare pretty valuable and a pretty nice card to have it's probably the worst ultra of the first eight tournament pack sets so there's only eight total ultras because there's one per set probably the worst one but still pretty hard to pull pretty old pretty awesome next up we have one of my favorite cards shinado king of a higher plane and no this is not a spoiler for a future psa return this is one i already had i actually bought this one from cool trainer ryan a couple years back for about 200 bucks it's worth a little bit more than that now maybe around 650 i think is what i had down dark crisis first edition ultra rare very cool Dark Crisis is pretty underrated or undervalued, whatever you want to say. Probably not undervalued because there's not a ton of awesome cards that you would really want, but there are some really cool ones. This is one of my favorites, if not my favorite from the set. Then we have a Magic Jammer, Gem Mint 10. This is first edition Metal Raiders. I think I had this one at a thousand last time and now it's down to 667 was a recent sale. It's gone down since the last top 25 video several months ago, but some cards have since there was a big boom at that point. And some cards like this that were not extremely popular went down in value. Gem Mint 10 though, I did pull this from my Metal Raiders box when we pulled the Beast Skull Dragon. So really cool to have this one in general for the Metal Raiders set. Then another Dark Crisis card, first edition, Skull Arch Fiend of Lightning. I think this one actually probably did go down in value, but there was not any sales data. So honestly, I think that this one would maybe be a little bit lower. I'm not really sure though, to be honest, because if there's not sales data, it's hard to change the actual value unless you see like one available for a lot or like a nine sold for a lot more than before. So you have to bump up the 10 value a little bit, something like that. You always have to be estimating when it comes to PSA graded cards because if there's not a sale, you don't know exactly what it is. So you got to keep that in mind. Here is a really cool one. Our first edition Elemental Hero Flame Wingman Ultimate Rare that we pulled out of the booster box, the Lost Millennium Hobby Box. It was a crazy pull. Unfortunately, it got the nine, I guess, due to centering. I still don't know why it got the nine. 
It's a very nice nine, but it's not that expensive a nine. It's like seven hundred fifty dollars compared to the ten is like three or four thousand, maybe three thousand. I'm not sure. But being one of the most iconic cards from GX seems a little low, but. That's what it is. There was a sale. Then there is the gold letter guy, the dragon champion. This one was completely guessed. I'm not sure what the value would be on this thing. I have it around $800 because it is a misprint. It is not a card you see in PSA 10 very often. So I kind of went around $800. I don't know if that's correct or not. There hasn't been any sort of sale on eBay or anything. Pretty cool card. I don't know if it's worth that much. Maybe it's worth more. Then we have another very cool Labyrinth of Nightmare card, the Mass Beast. We have a first edition PSA 10, one of the coolest ultra rares from the set. Not a very good card, but back in the day, 3,200, you were like, wow, this guy can beat a blue eyes. This thing's insane. I mean, it wasn't insane. It wasn't that good, but still pretty cool to have a ritual with 3,200 attack. Gym Mint 10. I always really liked this card as a kid, so that's why I got it. Next up, this one, I think, sold for like $900 on eBay, so it's a new card. Even though it's new, the pull rates on these things are crazy. You guys remember how many boxes we opened? 133 boxes just to pull this thing. So if you think about it, maybe the, the price is warranted. However, it's only a nine. Tens are going to go for a lot more or at least a decent amount more because obviously they're the perfect grade. This being only a PSA nine definitely hurts the value. I think it's around 900, which is still a lot for a new card. I have no idea what number we're on, but it'll be on the screen. We have Toon Cannon Soldier. This is another ultra rare from Tournament Pack. This is Tournament Pack six, and this is maybe like the second worst. I think this would be third. I think DD Warrior might be a little lower. And I have these back to back, so I will show that in a second. Toon Cannon Soldier is a pretty cool one. I think it's around a thousand, just under a thousand. I have not edited this price because I didn't find any sales different since then, so it could be a little lower because some cards have come down. However, being an ultra rare from Tournament Pack is pretty rare, so maybe keep it around the same. Next up, very similar, we have TP7. This is the DD Warrior Ultra Rare, another Ultra Rare from Tournament Pack. I remember getting this at auction for like $175. I was super excited because it's a really good deal. Even back then, it was like supposed to be like $250, $300. Now it's maybe like $1,000 as well. I haven't seen a sale on it, so I haven't been able to change the value. Here's one that I haven't been able to show much on videos, but this is a card that I got from Yu-Gi-Oh! Tube. He was selling some of these boxes to be opened on his channel like two years ago. February 2019, I believe. So I bought some. He pulled this guy for me. I sent it in to get graded, and bam, PSA 10 for the Red Eyes Ghost Rare. Very cool. This has not come to the TCG yet. I expect that it will at some point now that they've resumed doing Ghost Rares because at that point they had not resumed doing Ghost Rares. It was like one of the only ways to get Ghost Rares. So it was really exciting to do this. And of course, it was awesome to pull the Red Eyes and get it at 10. So I have around like a thousand bucks. I think I sold one around there, but I haven't seen any sales at all recently. So it might have gone up, might have stayed the same, might be less. Who knows? Speaking of Ghost Rares, Rainbow Dragon, PSA 9. This one actually did sell for a thousand dollars. Not this one, but another Rainbow Dragon, which shows that this card is really not that expensive. A thousand dollars for a nine. I know a thousand still a lot for a Yu-Gi-Oh card, but compared to a lot of these other cards as a nine, it's fairly affordable. The 10 is going to be a lot more though. So it, because it's a nine, that's really why it's a lot lower, but such a beautiful card that we pulled. And I just love this one. Next, we have Trap Hole. We've got a Legend of Blue Eyes first edition Trap Hole. This card was, I was valuing it like $2,000 last time. I also have another one, which is Dark Hole. So I did not find any sort of data on the Trap Hole. But I did find some doubt on the Dark Hole, and so I kind of put them at the same value because they're both pretty low tier LOB supers. Twelve hundred dollars is what I have them at. Two thousand is what they were they did sell for at some point, but it came way back down because there are only super rare, so it makes sense. So that's one, and then the next one is the Dark Hole, the one we actually found some sales data on. It was twelve hundred dollars, so. I figure Trap Hole kind of fits well with it. Next, we have one that has gone down recently. So we have Obelisk the Tormentor. Recently was more than about 1200. I think it's like 1250 or something like that was the sale recently. So this one has gone down a little bit. I didn't check out the specific copy. Maybe it was a week 10. This is Obelisk the Tormentor. The other two gods are actually worth a little bit more, which is interesting. Still an iconic god card, which is really cool. Obelisk secret rare and if you guys don't know the difference there's also the gold letter rare which is just a regular ultra and it's worth way less so they're both gbi-002 but one is secret and one's not here's one that is hilarious that it is more expensive than obelisk we have a first edition karibo gym mint 10 from metal raiders this guy sold for like 1300 something dollars which is absolutely crazy that this little furball is worth that much but he's iconic i mean if you don't love those little pie eyes i don't know what to tell you pie eyes first edition metal raiders you actually had to pull this one versus the gbi obelisk which you could just pull out of the game which you know is guaranteed every time so this one does have the randomization factor to it it is only a super rare though but that's still funny here's one that i think tanked in 
price. I saw a sale for this at 1,300 and something. It was slightly more than Creepo. It wasn't much. So this one went way down. I don't think that that's going to stay the same. This is a ultra rare first edition iconic card. So I feel like that's pretty low price, but there was a sale. So that's what I went with. So slightly more than Grebo feels a little bit wrong, but if you've not been mirror forced before and felt the pain of losing five attacking monsters or something like that on the playground, then you have never played Yu-Gi-Oh! Next up is one that is low because we did not get a great grade. We got the Near Mint to Mint 8, Tournament Pack 1, Mechanical Chaser. So here's another ultra rare from Tournament Pack, the very first one. We pulled this, but the centering got us an 8. So it was very unfortunate. It did not go super well in this one, but it's still worth like, I think, 13 something, $1,400, something like that. Pretty expensive card, even in an 8. Just so rare and so hard to find. Here we complete our set of God cards. So first we have Slifer the Sky Dragon. This one sold for about $1,500. Very nice secret rare. These all have gone down a little bit recently, but they are the God cards. They are really nice looking. So I do feel good about having them, even though they've gone down a little bit. And finally, the Winged Dragon of Raw, also about $1,500. Some were sold for more than that. And it's come down a little bit recently due to just every, everything in general coming down a little bit. Still a really nice secret rare god card. Here's one that I've never actually seen a sale for other than when I bought this about two and a half years ago. Got this from my friend Fiche. He sold me this for like $260, which I think is definitely low for what it would be now. I don't know what it would be. I've estimated at $1,500 that could be high, but a PSA 10 Ultimate Rare Elemental Hero, it just feels like would be that high. That's just my guesstimate that I had from last time, and there's been no sales since. There was no sales before that. Who knows what this is? Let me know what you think in the comments what this would be worth. Here's a really cool one. Genzo First Edition, the one we pulled from the every pack opening when we forgot to record it, ended up only grading a 9, unfortunately. It's a lot harder to find BGS 9 prices, so I went with a PSA 9 price, which is $1,800. PSA is worth more than BGS, though, so it's probably not worth that 1800 in this slab. However, I do think this would get a PSA 9, but with that centering, maybe not. Secret Rare Genzo, still really cool either way. A very nice card. We will see another one of these later. Here we have a Vampire Lord First Edition Dark Crisis. This is the Secret Rare in Dark Crisis from the 24-pack Hobby Box. The 36-pack boxes have the Judgment of Anubis, so this one is much better. Really cool card and actually really good back in the day before Invasion of Chaos because this card was extremely annoying to kill. If you use like some sort of card removal on this thing and you just destroyed it, it would just come right back. Like if you Raigeki this thing the next turn, it was going to come back and just destroy you. And 2000 is not something to sniff at. Just a pretty good card in general. Really cool artwork. I mean, he's got the nice blue comb over hair it's very funny very awesome i had this one at 1800 on my spreadsheet so i don't know if there was a sale at some point or i don't know where that came from i don't know if it's accurate or not but that's that's why it's here that's um, that's just the explanation here's a really cool one relinquish first edition from magic ruler this one we graded ourselves which is really cool there was a sale on this one it was slightly over 1800 very cool card i think the fact that sdp used the same artwork it made it a, worth a little bit less but it's still really cool to see this card here's one of the only cards cards that I manually bumped up just on a guess. So I had this at $1,000 last time. This card has to be worth more than a thousand in my opinion. There's been no sales since maybe like a year or two ago. I don't really have any real reason, but I feel like this should be at least $2,000 because it's from a $3,500 booster box. It's an ultimate rare. You got to get the PSA 10. It just feels like it should be 2,000. It's an iconic card. Let me know what you guys think this should be worth. I don't know exactly what it is, but I went with 2,000. That's kind of why it's at the position it is at. Here is another one that I manually bumped up because I did see PSA 9s available for like 1500 There was no 10s available. I didn't see any sales, so I kind of went off the actual available cards. And because the 9s were like crazy high in terms of listings, and the raw card is insane now. It's like a 1000 bucks or something like that. A PSA 10 has to be like, what, at least double a raw card near mint? It just seems like it should be that much. I don't know if it is or not. That's kind of the guesstimation process there. But Champion Pack 2 is why this is so expensive from the next tournament pack. So there's Tournament Pack 1 through 8, then Champion Pack 1 through 8. So they reprinted Magician of Faith from a rare into a super rare. And it was the high rarity for GOAT format. Really nice super rare copy. Then we have the Misprint Rainbow Dragon BGS 9. There was a sale on this one for about $2350 plus shipping it was in july though so it's been quite a while but it was a sale and because there was nothing else i went with that one about 2400 dollars for this thing it is the misprint rainbow so it says rainbow dragon chaos neos picture obviously a huge error there really cool from gladiators assault the chaos neos is actually from gladiators assault rainbow dragons from tactical evolution here's another one that i slightly bumped up there was a sale last year when i did this around two thousand dollars 
I put it at 2,500 because the nines were being listed way higher than 2,500 and a 10 I know sold for like 15 grand. So a nine seems okay at 2,500. I don't know if that's right. It could be a little low, hard to know, but it's still a really cool retro pack two card. And speaking of retro pack two, we are on the way to 100,000. We're gonna be opening a booster box of this. Hopefully we'll get another one of these and we'll get a 10. Here's one that surprised me while doing research. Dark Necrofear first edition gem mint 10. This thing sold for three grand. Last time I had it at $1,200. It makes sense because it is an icon iconic card. It's really cool. Ultra rare from Labyrinth of Nightmare. One of the best cards you can pull. Probably the best card besides maybe Gemini Elf. So it makes sense that it's more expensive, but 3000 actually surprised me at how high it was. And that was on a sold listing site, 130 point, which is where you can check and see if stuff actually sold on eBay. Then we have an iconic first edition, Dark Magician, the card we pulled with Leonhardt. Got the nine, unfortunately, but still a $3,500 card based off a recent sale. A very, very nice one. Legend of Blue Eyes, first edition Dark Magician. I mean, just one of the coolest cards. Not the Blue Eyes, second best, unless you want, you know, unless you want to argue Red Eyes, but very good. I think Red Eyes is actually worth a little bit more, so maybe third. But still an awesome one from Legend of Blue Eyes and one of the best cards from the first set. Here's one that is right around that same price as Dark Magician. It is a PSA 10, though, so we're going to put it a little bit ahead. Blue Eyes Toon Dragon, first edition. This is not the one from Leon. Heart. That one was OC. This is the one I pulled in 2019 and graded myself. At the time, it was worth $325. I remember that specifically. Now it's about $3,400, $3,500. It was worth over four grand, and it has fallen a little bit, but an iconic secret rare tune card. So I think holding on to this one is going to be nice in the future. Here's one that I did not see any sort of sales data. I just kept the same price. I think it, maybe it's worth even more. Gaia the Fierce Knight. It's a first edition ultra rare from Legend of Blue Eyes. PSA 10. So those boxes are insanely expensive now. We saw the entire case go for nearly 600 grand, which is absolutely crazy. So one ultra rare being around 3,500 seems slightly low, but that's what I have right now. Probably the worst ultra rare, unless you want to argue maybe a limb, but I think the limbs usually go for more because they want to make the entire Exodia set. Then the Black Cluster Soldier Envoy of the Beginning, first edition, Invasion of Chaos, PSA 10. No sales data from what I could find, so I have it around the same 4,500 value that it was before. Probably, if anything could hold value, it would be the Black Cluster Soldier Envoy of the Beginning. I feel okay keeping it around there, I know Chaos Emperor Dragon went up a little bit, so I think this one probably did too, but I didn't see anything to actually support it. Here's one that I'm not really sure the value of this thing. I have it up here because it is a very low pop, ultra rare from Tournament Pack. So this is Tournament Pack 8, Gym Mint 10, low pop. It's like six or seven total. So I kind of estimated it like four and a half to 5,000. Because Royal Decree is around that area and it is another tournament pack that we have not hit up yet, this is kind of why I went with that. And it actually has a lower pop, I believe. Unless there have been some recently graded, this has a lower pop than Royal Decree. So I'm going with around 4,500, maybe five grand, maybe a little bit less than that. It's hard to know unless there's a real offer or a sale on this thing. Then we have the Black Skull Dragon. I've had multiple of these, I think four overall. We've graded four PSA 10s. I only have one left because I'm keeping one for the collection. This is the one we pulled out of the booster box and graded ourselves, which was a pretty awesome opening. You guys can always check that one out. But I think it's worth around 4,500. I've sold three around that price, so I think it's pretty solid. It hasn't gone down too much, maybe a little bit from when I sold mine. A very nice card. And while it does have a higher pop, and by the way, pop means population. So population of Gem Mint 10s of this card, first edition, Beast Gold Dragon, Gem Mint 10. So that's one population. A nine would have a different population. Metal Raiders does have high population cards, but they're so iconic that people still want them. This one is a very similar price. Summon Skull, also from Metal Raiders, first edition, Gem Mint 10. Very similar price, usually slightly higher than Beast Skull, but I think right now it's around the same. It's iconic, it's from the anime, Yugi card, you gotta love it, ultra rare first edition Metal Raiders. Here's one that my spreadsheet had at $4,800. I'm not sure, I think that was a sale, but I bet it came down a little bit. This one's from Magician's Force first edition. If you know that booster box is crazy, we opened one one time, very expensive. So the cards inside, if they're really good, are pretty expensive. So this might be correct around that 4,800. I could see it going down a little bit though, because I know Beast Skull and Summon Skull both came down a little bit. This one probably has an actual lower pop than those though. So I bet that it is a little bit harder to find. This one was really tough. It's the Red Eyes Black Dragon LOB First Edition. PSA 9, I think, sold for 5,000. This was previously a PSA 9, and now it's a BGS 9. So BGS is going to be worth a little bit less than PSA 9, but this card was previously a PSA 9. So that's something to think about. It might not be worth the five grand that the PSA 9 is. I threw it in there because it was a PSA 9 before, but you could argue that it could be less. 
Then we have the aforementioned Royal Decree from Tournament Pack 4. It's an ultra rare, the ultra rare from Tournament Pack 4. Someone offered me about, I think it was either $5,000 or $5,500 for this card, but I don't want to sell it because I want to keep this set together that I have. But it's a pretty expensive one because it is rare. One in 108, of course. I think the pops around seven or eight. It was six when I got this. Someone graded one, and I think someone might have graded another one. So it might be at eight now, but still extremely low. Only eight of these exist in PSA 10, which is extremely crazy. That that's why someone is willing to pay so much for a somewhat random card. Royal Decree is sort of iconic from back in the day, but compared to like Summon Skull, it's not nearly that iconic. And speaking of iconic, we have Monster Reborn from Legend of Blue Eyes First Edition. This card I had at 5,000 on the spreadsheet previously, so I think that happened back before I made the other video, and I have not seen any sales since. So we're keeping it where it was, $5,000 for the Monster Reborn. Incredibly nice ultra rare card. From the original set, Legend of Blue Eyes, so any ultra rare PSA 10 from there is expensive, as you guys have seen a couple of these already. There's only six cards left, so we're in the top 10. We have the Chaos Emperor Dragon. I mentioned this earlier. It has gone up a little bit. I think I had it at 4,500 last time. It's up to 5,500 based on a recent sale. First edition, Invasion of Chaos Seeker Rare. It's an expensive booster box, and it's the much better Seeker Rare. The other one is the Invader of Darkness, which would go for way, way less. This card was used in duels back in the day. It got banned. It's just a really cool-looking artwork. It's from a very rare set. So that $5,500 makes sense because it's just so epic. And we have a weird one here. The Right Leg of the Forbidden One. I saw on 130 point a $6,000 sale. So I don't know if those are always going through, but according to eBay, this sold. At $6,000, first edition, right leg of the Forbidden One. So someone was either really looking to complete their Exodia set or Exodia is going way up because just the right leg is worth $6,000 in a Gem Mint 10. Really insane because one of the most expensive cards I own, just the leg. It's the only Exodia piece I have in PSA 10. It's actually one of the easiest ones to get. But still, 6000 is absolutely crazy. Then we have the legendary Cyber Dark Dragon. This is a card that I have not seen a sale for like ever. I've, I was offered $6,500 on this a long time ago, and I've not heard anything else in terms of actual sales since then. So we're sticking with that ultimate rare Cyber Dark Dragon. It's from a hobby box. Very hard to pull. Very epic looking cover card from GX. One of my favorite cards that I own because I pulled it myself. Looks really good. We graded it at 9, and then later graded it at 10, which is just crazy. Now we are into the top three. Do you guys know what they are? If you do know the top three, put them down in the comments. Here we have a Genzo First Edition. This honestly could be number two. Number two has kind of gone down. This one has gone up a lot. This card in the last video was worth maybe three or 4,000, I think. Maybe we got it up to 6,000, I can't remember. But I did sell my faded one for $12,100. So it's probably worth a little bit more than this one. Then one actually did sell for 12,000 besides that. So a regular one sold for 12,000. So two sold for 12. I think the most recent sale was down at like 9.8 one or two maybe six i can't remember but it was under 10 so this is probably not twelve thousand anymore but maybe it is i'm not really sure because this is fairly low pop for some cigarettes i think it's like in the 50s so it's not super crazy compared to the tournament pack ones it's pretty high but it's extremely iconic genzo was really good in the game it was a really awesome monster in the anime just everything is going for this genzo it's hard to grade if you have a 10 it's a nice one to have i don't know the exact value but i'd say it's probably third most valuable card second card the morphing jar has been ousted from its first place position in our top 10 it was morphing jar in my top 25 it was morphing jar but now it's number two so what's number one if you guys know let me know in the comments also this card i believe has gone down a little bit it was up at 15 grand at one point someone bought one for fifteen thousand. i think it has come down there was a sale around like twelve thousand, and so maybe it's somewhere between 12 and 15 now but it's still the ultra rare from tp2 one of the rarest tp sets ever then it's the ultra rare you have to pull at 108, as we've mentioned multiple times in this video. And it got the gym at 10. There's only about 25 of these, 24 or 25 of these in the world. So it's a pretty rare, it's pretty awesome. And everybody loves this card. Unfortunately, it's not the Genzo jar. It is a really cool looking one though. So number two, let's get to number one. What Alston Morphing Jar? And the final card of my top 50 rarest and most expensive Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Black Rose Dragon, first edition, Crossroads of Chaos, Ghost Rare. You guys saw this PSA return. This card is... An unknown value, but I think that it is easily over about twelve to 15000 It might be bottom 15000 because I know that a friend of mine traded his Stardust Dragon, 
similar first edition. They both don't have the first edition booster box. They both are iconic 5Ds cards. His was around 25 grand in trade value. That's really high. Parallel this one, maybe say it's like 5,000 less, around 20 grand. Maybe you go 18 grand, 15 to 20 grand. I don't know, something like that. But I think that this one would go for more than the Morphing Jar if I did sell it. There's no sales data though. Hasn't been sold recently. If it was, it was privately. So I didn't get any sort of data online. So you guys will have to let me know what you guys think that this one is worth. I think this is the most expensive card I own now which is pretty cool. It's a very nice one. Ghost Rare First Edition Gym Mint 10. That's it for this video in terms of my top 50 rarest and most expensive graded Yu-Gi-Oh cards. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like the video, subscribe, and let me know in the comments your favorite card or your most expensive card for the giveaway. Before we end this video, I have to shout out my ultimate supporters on YouTube and Patreon. We have TCG Trusted Cards, Toe and Foe Show, Tomato Juice, Stanley, Mike Nance, and Mimic Gecko. Thank you guys for supporting the channel, and that's it for this video. I will see you guys later. Peace. Shining Abyss. Ooh, the Revival Jam. Oh, and oh!